Hello, everyone. I want to welcome you all to this talk. Uh, the talk is titled Increasing App Confidence Using CI, CD, and Infrastructure as Code. And in this talk, I'm going to be talking primarily about smoke testing and some of the benefits you can gain uh, in increasing the confidence in your releases by leveraging infrastructure as code and CI, CD. So my name is Angel Rivera. I'm a developer advocate for CircleCI. And in my role, I basically interface with developers, interact with them, uh, and engage with them on a one-to-one -one level or a grassroots level. And I basically learn how folks are using technology in our space. Um, it's a pretty cool job where I get to actually learn a lot about how folks are actually using technology, right, in real-world instances versus theory. So um, today I want to kind of share some information that I've gained over time. Uh, regarding um, increasing, you know, your application release uh, confidence, meaning, you know, it's been kind of uh, tested and different strategies on how to do that uh, quickly as well, right? Because the CICD is all about being, um, gaining velocity in your software development lifecycle. So uh, definitely want to share some of that information with you. So let's talk about smoke tests. Um, I speak to a lot of developers, like I mentioned earlier, and when I speak to them, I always ask them about, you know, what kind of smoke testing are you doing? Uh, because we're always discussing how to make our pipelines more efficient, more optimized. Uh, and quite frankly, I'm very surprised at the amount of um, responses that I get uh, basically telling me, you know, their test runs uh, are, are pretty com comprehensive and expensive, uh, meaning they do a lot of rigorous testing on every build. Uh, so with that, you know, when we're talking about smoke testing, smoke tests are designed to be simple tests, right, that you run every time on your builds because you want to kind of suss out lo the low-hanging fruit is what I call it. So, you know, there are configurations that you know uh, will cause problems if they're not set correctly. So you would run a smoke test against that, right? Um, and again, these are kind of... Um, tests you run against things that you already know about for the most part and you want to make sure that um, nothing has changed right because we all kind of modify code and we maybe change a configuration or a flag in our code that um, is not intended to be you know released to production and that's kind of where smoke tests are um, you don't want to run these tests when they are in a you know, uh, comprehensive and, and complex situation. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you're doing some integration testing and you want to make sure that uh, it's performing properly, you would run maybe some sort of load testing or performance testing. Um, that's not what smoke tests are. Smoke tests are the simple things uh, that you can do really, really quickly. They're designed to be lightweight and scale, all right? And so, and, and effort as well. So, um, and, you know, a good analogy is when I was a, a kid in high school uh, working summer jobs in construction, I would watch the plumbers kind of build out their whole um, project in the construction uh, of, of a building. And one of the things I noticed was like they were testing these, uh, the plumbing with, with, by injecting smoke into, into the plumbing. And I always wondered why would they do that? Uh, the reason was, Think about it. If you, you know, if you're a plumber and you uh, join two pipes together uh, and you make a joint, right? Uh, and let's say you want to test that joint. Um, if you throw water in that uh, plumbing, it's just going to have a big mess on your hands if you have any kind of leaks, right? So the smoke is kind of their really lightweight way to engage uh, their work and test their work. Uh, without having to create a big mess and get everything wet, right? So it kind of was, I thought it was genius at the time. Uh, and then as I, you know, progressed on into developing software, uh, this term came up a few times and it kind of made sense to me already. So, uh, right. So if you think about smoke testing, think about it that way, right? So it's the way to test some things without really getting messy. Now, that's not an extensive test, right, per se, because if you stick water inside those pipes uh, and you can still have, have leaks, but at the end of the day, you can kind of suss out any kind of, um, you know, leaks that you have or, or bad seals that you have in your joints uh, just by running smoke. So when you think about smoke testing, right, again, keep in mind it's supposed to be lightweight and uh, very limited in scale. And 
obviously, if you're finding, you know, problems during your smoke test, right? Now you know that you have some issues and you need to go and fix them, which is totally appropriate. Um, smoke testing will help you also avoid the unknowns or at least, you know, help uh, identify some of the problems that you didn't know about in your code, uh, right? Tests are only as good as, uh, I guess, the experience that you've had with your code and the way that you've run it, right? So I get this question often a lot is like, when should I run smoke tests? Uh, and again, these tests are supposed to be uh, designed to be uh, lightweight and, and pretty much effortless, right? Because if you're using automation, uh, you just pretty much tell the system to run it. So what we're trying to do is balance between velocity, meaning, you know, going really, really fast with your CI, CD, making sure that everything runs quickly so that you get that fast feedback loop versus, um, you know, extensive uh, testing, which again can be pushed down further into a different pipeline. Um, so you should run your, your smoke tests on pretty much every code change. So anytime code changes, push through your CI CD pipeline, uh, run a smoke test, right? Uh, it, even if it's, you know, sometimes you can use unit tests kind of to validate this kind of the, the notion I get from unit tests is that they are, you know, kind of a, a, a smoke test to per se, but I've seen some folks go really, really uh, comprehensive and, 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 and complex with their, with their unit tests, which, um, I think you can you can strike a balance there, right? But but if you consider, uh, you know, running unit tests on every code run, uh, you can incorporate smoke testing into those unit tests. So you can also uh, leverage CI/CD, right, to run these tests, which you should be doing uh, in most cases. Uh, it's modern day software development kind of dictates that we're all running some sort of CI, CD, uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery, or deployment uh, platform or, or services, right, against our code so we can automate all of those things and, and not really have to put a lot of effort behind it. So again, right, you wanna run uh, your smoke tests on every CI, CD run. And then one of the things I wanted to talk about today was smoke testing deployments. Um, a lot of folks that I speak to, even though you're running CI, CD, maybe you even have smoke tests running uh, against your code, right? Uh, how it's gonna maybe run in a server environment as far as like starting the application. But when you're actually deploying to a target environment, are we really smoke testing those deployments? And the answer is generally no. So that's what I wanna kind of talk about today. Um, and the way you would be able to do that really, really easily, simply, and almost effortlessly is uh, by running infrastructure as code. Um, for those of you that don't know, infrastructure as code is a way for you to codify all of your uh, uh, you know, creation of infrastructure, especially in the cloud space uh, today, right? Even the cloud providers, uh, we're leveraging infrastructure as code, uh, tools like Pulumi, and HashiCorp, which is, uh, Pulumi is going to be the one I show in my demo today. Uh, but for the most part, you want to leverage infrastructure as code so that you can build out those target environments in your CI CD pipeline and then deploy your application to those and then destroy them, right? It's always a, a, a great uh, kind of, um, again, uh, assurance that the application is operating as designed in the target environments uh, or in the environments that you're targeting, I should say. So again, you know, with, with uh, pushing smoke testing into your deployments, um, you're going to gain insights into behaviors uh, within that target environment. So real quickly, i um, just going to recap uh, what I talked about. Um, uh, definitely automate your smoke testing using CI, CD or some other form of automation. Uh, it will help you identify bugs with, you know, low hanging fruit type bugs. Um, and, and that's awesome because again, you know, these are things that you shouldn't really have to worry about because you already know that they're there, but you just want to validate that, you know, um, your, op your application is operating uh, from jump uh, the way it was designed. And again, you're getting some valuable insights into how the application will run in the target environments. Uh, make sure that um, you know you're down the down down 
towards the release uh, portion of your of your pipeline, your release managers and your your team are, are super satisfied because it's kind of been vetted right through that whole pipeline process. And finally, right to increase the app confidence, um, again, you know, testing is really important. It also helps with um, figuring out where you have issues. And then, of course, uh, it vets your application, which then leads to stronger uh, confidence, right, in those builds and releases for when you're deploying to the target environments. So this is pretty much the end of the talk portion, and I'm going to jump into a quick demo. All right, so I just wanted to show you some code uh, for this demo. Um, basically, I have a GitHub repo, uh, and it just has a simple Python Flask application um, that serves up a static web page. Uh, again, the application isn't really the focus here. It's just showing you how to leverage uh, some smoke testing strategies within your CI/CD pipeline. Uh, so let's look at the smoke test uh, that we're going to run against um, our deployment. Real quickly, this is built on a open source project called uh, smoke.sh. Uh, and basically, it's a bash kind of framework for building smoke tests. Uh, the quick thing that I want to do here is uh, with my smoke test is once uh, Pulumi instantiates right uh, a new uh, Kubernetes cluster within um, GCP, I want to go ahead and just basically do some basic tests on it, make sure that the application is functioning uh at w on on that cluster make sure that the uh, docker container is is functioning basically executing and and you know starting up on the on the cluster and then i'm going to run some quick tests so uh, one of the things i want to run is obviously check for the server make sure i get a response of okay 200 that's that's the first test the next test is going to be validating that um, there's some uh, specific strings that I'm looking for in my, in the body of my website since it is a static web page we can do that we can test for some static uh, text and that's what I'm doing here with these two statements and once that happens right uh, the test pass um, and then Pulumi will then destroy so that means all that infrastructure that I built will be uh, completely destroyed because you don't want to leave infrastructure up right running uh, that's a security kind of concern as well as um, uh, wasting money for the most part when you're doing those things, um, you know, just leaving uh, infrastructure up for no reason. Uh, and again, it served its purpose, so you want to destroy it, which literally, uh, you know, for every CI CD run, you want to run um, a check against uh, this deployment um, in the, tar the environments that we're targeting. So this is a really nice way to kind of get that app confidence I'm talking about. Um, so let's go ahead and, and demo this. So I'm going to change uh, this to version number 13. I'm gonna quickly save it again. This is just a quick way to, you know, show off some of that stuff. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do a, uh, okay. And now we're gonna basically kick off by pushing this commit upstream. Uh, we're gonna go jump over to our Circle CI dashboard. And as you can see, things started kicking off and running. Um, let's take a look real quickly, take a look. Um, so this is what we call a, a, a pipeline. It's the overall, our overarching um, object. Uh, in Circle CI, and then what we're running here, the build test deploy is an actual workflow. So this orchestrates the jobs, which are a uh, grouping of commands, right, that serve a certain purpose. Uh, so the workflow is orchestrating my jobs. As you can see, I'm running two jobs at the same time. Uh, this is called uh, running in concurrency. Uh, and what we're doing here is trying to save time, right? CI CD is all about quick, uh, you know, uh, software development processes. So, um, one of the ways that you can you can speed things up in your uh, feedback loops is by doing multiple things at the same time, right? It makes sense when you have multiple tasks. If you can get them done at you know at the same time simultaneously, uh, things will move a lot quicker. Uh, the cool thing here is uh, one thing I want you to note is um, there's there is a dependency, right? So this deploy to GCP will not occur unless both of these pass. So if any one of these uh, jobs fail, this will not kick off. Great. So now we have our uh, Kubernetes cluster deployed, our smoke test ran. And as you can see here uh, on the system, here are the results um, right here. Uh, get, got the 200 OK response. Um, the body of the, of the web page has uh, the text that we were looking for. 
which were the two statements here. Uh, and then the application is actually still running. Now, while that's running, let's go to a quick check just to see it visually. Uh, and as you can see, here's the application. Um, I'm basically running right with version 13. Uh, and basically that's it. Uh, at the end of the day, what's going to happen next is the system, uh, well, the, the uh, pipeline will then run Pulumi Destroy and all that infrastructure, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, you don't want to leave that li lingering, uh, collecting uh, debt and, and also uh, being available there for maybe some security uh, problems, right, or concerns. Uh, so I want to thank all of you for um showing up to this talk and if you need to reach out to me my twitter handle is punk data and again um, thank you for for attending the talk and i hope that you found it useful